Absolutely. But we are moving into our next game. Hayata is knocked out, and Ineffable, Ineffable will take his place uh, from Team Pulse. And we do have a bio for him, albeit brief. Uh, Zach Batten is Ineffable. He started playing StarCraft II in early 2012. Uh, that summer, however, an unfortunate event happened where he broke his leg, so he was confined mostly indoors, and uh, played a lot of StarCraft and was able to get up to Master League because of all that training. Uh, he played in the uh, WCG Canada Qualifiers, finished in the top four, and only lost to Hendralisk, which if you follow eSports, Hendralisk is somebody uh, that has a decent pretty name pretty far in MLG last, uh, last year. He's actually had a few stage yeah. matches. Yep, so that is nothing to sneeze at. He is a good player, and so this is going to be a Protoss versus Terran. It should be an interesting match. Let's see if he is able to deal with the mech push of Mr. Cash if he chooses to go that again. Or maybe Mr. Cash will show us a little bit of bioplay. As we jump right into it, in the upper left-hand corner, our teal Terran, which is personally my favorite color in this game. It is Pulse Ineffable. And in the lower right-hand corner, showing off his skill with Hellbats and Vikings and Thors, for playing for StarCraft Ascension, it is Mr. Cash. PVT, definitely one of my favorite matchups right now, so I'm interested to see what comes out. Uh, we saw in the first PVT, it was a quick uh, HOTS 1-1-1, as I like to call it. Uh, Marines, Mines, Medivacs, essentially, um, into just a lot of bio and tanks. Um, curious to see what he ends up coming out with. Uh, there is no bracket yet. This is second group stage so if you go to sc2ctl excuse me dot com and click tournaments at the top you'll see the pools uh, this is week four so we got two more weeks of pools and then we go into a bracketed style of tournament which i believe there's a post now from uh, troy the creator and ultimate god of sc2ctl about the potential bracket format coming up so lots of exciting matches to be had in the future of this tournament. We are just at the early stages, but we're still seeing amazing play come out of these teams. Absolutely. Uh, I was just responding to Inferior Warp's question in chat, obviously. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, do please tell us in chat. We'd love to see it. Also, feedback please send to our Twitters, at WingnetSC, at Galligation, so we can remember it for our next cast. We have made a lot of changes to these casts as time has gone on uh, from feedback, so it's definitely important to us uh, what you what you like, what you don't like. Let us know. Yep. We're seeing a similar opening from Mr. Cash getting that command center at the top of his base, sending an SCV out to scout at the moment. And now we see the uh, cybernetic score coming down from Ineffable, pretty standard. He does have three uh, probes in each of his gas, however, so that's a little bit more gas than you usually see at this stage of the game. Likely to be a Stargate opening with the three gas, almost. Uh, unless you're just really banking up the gas, that's either two situations. You're going to go for the Mothership Core and Warp Gate right away and a Twilight of some kind, or you're going to go for the Stargate. You and we do Stargate. see the Proxy Stargate in the lower right hand, just north of the Terran base. So it is likely going to be an Oracle popping out of there, and it is going to probably do some big damage. There are no Marines cooking out of that barracks right now. Even if there were Marines, it would still do big damage. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, I think uh, I think one Oracle can kill something like four to five Marines, if with a little bit of micro. Definitely a very strong opening. The, the, one of my favorite openings, uh, strongest, I think, especially if you can build a little bit of defense back on with a couple sentries, Mothership Core. It's even stronger, I think, if you actually move the Mothership Core up with the Oracle, because then you can use Time Warp to really do some extra damage, which is fun. And there's like, that Oracle getting Chrono Boosted. Mr. Cash smells some funny business. He does have a SCV moving around the map, trying to figure out what's going on after got, seeing what's in that main base, but he's not going to see it. He's got two SCVs moving around. He's got one on the left, one on the right. He's scouting oh, right. all the proxy positions except the one where it actually is. Yeah. But it looks like he's going to find it eventually as he's got that SCV rallied right next to it. But that's going to be too late because right as he comes to see it, the Oracle is going to be in his base. Engineering Bay is going down, but there's not going to be enough time to do anything about it. Those Marines are just kind of walking away, not ready to deal with that yet. The, pro or the SCVs are being pulled. Now the Marines are at five. They're going to move in and deal with that. Oh, Two have fallen, and 
third one so falls. Close. Yeah, he botched the micro on that just a little bit. He could have taken down at least four Marines, but it looks like the Stalker's going to be in the front. This is really nice pressure from Ineffable. I remember mm, in... Second uh, Oracle coming out now. I remember in week two when we casted him, he had some fun creative builds. Uh, he's got the second Oracle coming in. Stalker's going to be poking oh, in the front. And he canceled that missile turret by mistake. Sure I think he was trying to select him. the uh, the SCV to get him away from that turret, but he ended up just collect, or clicking on the missile turret, hitting escape, and then kind of he must have been kicking himself for that. The SCVs all kind of were derping around it a little bit. And yeah, Mr. Cash is in a tough spot now because that Oracle cleaned up a lot of his Marines in the Stalker. Stalkers are so good against Marines early with that Oracle doing a lot of damage in the Stalker command to follow. Even if the Oracle wasn't able to clean up the Marines, the Stalker likely would be able to. Uh, looks like he's going to keep only one stalker there. He's chrono boosting out a Void Ray. This is also, uh, from Naniwa, a pretty interesting build lately. If you do proxy Void Ray against Terran and go for it right away, you can win quite a bit unless they scout it and I exactly prepare for it. Naniwa has been doing that quite a bit on the ladder. Pretty interesting. But it looks like Ineffable is just going to go for a big Void Ray Oracle push here with the stalker after doing so much damage early. Not a bad play at all. Mr. Cash going to set up his natural now, immediately putting down that missile turret before the command center even lands. He does not want to be caught with his pants down when this air inevitably comes back in. And big push coming out for an ineffable now. Five stalkers, a void ray, an oracle. There's going to be some damage done here. And there's just not a lot of marines. Yeah, I'm really surprised he hasn't sent his mothership core down here to help with this because a time warp right now would just be huge. It really would, and the SCVs move forward trying to buffer the damage from the Marines, but the Marines are getting targeted by the Void Ray, and three remaining, and now two, and the Marine does come out, so that's two again, but Mr. Cash does GG. There's just not a lot that he could do in that situation. Yeah, pretty straightforward game from Ineffable. It's, uh, you know, if, if you go with those early Oracles and you get a lot of damage done, that just really really pulls you back and as you know I've talked to quite a few Terrans lately because this is one of my favorite builds actually a uh, Terran I ran into on the ladder he said uh, how come Protoss doesn't build Oracle anymore as I was sending my Oracle in oh. his base I said hello <laughs> <laughs> oh no surprise <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is not a comfortable position to be in nope but uh, straightforward game uh, one and done there for Ineffable he's gonna